welcome back to another episode of the Girl Power Alliance podcast. I'm so thrilled to have this beautiful guest on here today. Um, you're going to be so blessed by her. Let me, let me read you her bio and then we'll get started. Kai A. Pineda is a pastor, author, speaker, and worship leader who's been singing and recording music since the age of 15. She was born in Northern California. She began her music career recording demos for producers such as Preston Glass, Skylar Jett, and others. After years of singing background and growing as a writer, Kai relocated to New York. That was in 1997. Becoming one of the only female staff writers and singers for character music at the time, she saw a need for women engineers. So she studied under Troy Taylor and began recording projects in-house working with well-known artists in the industry. After a few years with character music, Kai decided to form her own production company, writing for independent artists and recording her first EP in 1999. Later that same year, she toured singing gospel music in Germany, how funny, and uh, accepted the call to preach starting Bible college the following year. She graduated with honors and relocated back to her hometown working as an associate pastor. But music was still in her heart. It's in my heart too, but I did not get the skill or talent. So that's another whole subject. Okay. In 2011, Kyrie recorded her first album, a live worship CD entitled Speechless with Levi to King. Um, Kai officially joined the Me Too music family as an artist in 2012. At the same time, her and her husband, Pastor Alex Pineda, started a, an in-home, uh, a home fellowship in Inglewood, California. Kingdom House of Worship was birthed and has expanded into four states and one country with more expansion taking place this year in 2020. That's so exciting. In 2016, she released her sophomore project called Unshakable. The album was recorded in nine days. That's got to be a record. And, <laughs> and, the, and, uh, and the album Kai desired to make. That's huge because I know a lot of artists can't say that. The first single, To You Who Are Faithful, debuted at number one on the CMC charts and remained there for three weeks. With all of her accomplishments, there was still one item on her bucket list missing. This year, Kai became an author. Her first book being released October 4th, uh, 2019. So that was last year. Um, Dear Church, Volume 1, The Beauty of the Body is a call to end divisions within the Christian community. Uh, discussing racial tension, personal preference, and other issues. Kai penned a love letter that she hopes stirs others to respond with the desire to unify. My gosh, if that is not more needed now than ever before, welcome to the podcast. Thank you for having me. I'm so glad to be here. Girl Alliance, let's go. I mean, <laughs> I just, you know, I knew your background, but after reading in detail, that is so amazing. That is a lot of accomplishment even before you're doing what you're doing now. Yeah, God has been amazing. Um, and what's interesting is I probably... Uh, some years ago wouldn't have said that I had accomplished anything, you know, because I think sometimes, right, we, we look at, I'm just doing what I'm doing and we don't see the value True. in the beginning of our story, right? We're just trying to get to the end of the story. And it was in the beginning that God was crafting and molding and shaping me into the woman I am now, walking in the call on my life and pursuing the plan that he, he laid. So, um, it has been an incredible journey, and this year, 2020, I'm celebrating 20 years in ministry, which seems weird because I'm not old. I mean, I'm old. <laughs> you look like you're 20. <laughs> yeah, I'm not, but <laughs> praise God for good genes. Thank you, mom and dad. Uh, <gasps> you know, but to to be fully fulfilled and in, and love what I do in serving people is just it's a gift that not not everyone gets you know, really discovers. And, I, and that's always my prayer that people can discover the plan of God for their lives. Yes. And so true. And I know that there's a few things that in your bio that weren't there. Can you expand on that? Yes. So um, 2020, you know, I think all of us started 2020 with very uh, grandiose ideas of things that we wanted <laughs> to do. And then, you know, by March, the world was called into shelter in place. Um, and I really feel like um, uh, the Lord was calling us in the body to come home, come home to him. 
um, and to really understand the power in our homes, the sanctuary, the houses that we have, but also to uh, reshape the narrative that we've had around the church. Because uh, if you exegete the word church, it has never been building. It has been the ecclesia, which is the whole congregation of God, which is people. And so what we have been doing for years, and what's so funny is there have been pastors who were like, oh, well, that's how we started. And when are you going to get your building? And we're like, no, this uh -huh. isn't how we started. This is what we're doing. We're patterning the Acts Church because this is how the Acts Church began. Uh, they fellowshiped in homes and they founded their fellowship on three things, prayer, study of the word and community fellowship coming together. Um, and so, um, you know, I think we all had all these dreams that we wanted to do. Um, the, the one thing I knew I would do this year was to release my second book, um, uh, Dear Church, volume two. Um, and yet, though, once life started, um, what we what I what God had focused on, we could not do physically. Right. And so um, he told me to put that on hold and to begin to write about what's happening now. Wow. Uh, so doing that. And then in the, and then in the midst, uh, two weeks prior to our shelter in place, called me to start a coaching program and um, not knowing we were going to be in a pandemic. And the day I went to, re to release it, uh, we got the call. And so then I was like, Lord, what do you want to do? And he said, the, th the reason why I asked you is the same. Women are in need of community. And where I thought I might have 10, 12 women, because he said, don't promote it. Just send it to a few women you know, and they will share it. Um, and I built the site in a day. We released it. And on a Friday, 92 visits happened in with wow. five, six hours. And so now I'm coaching 34 women from, uh, we started in April to the end of the year. And it's, it's, it's a rise. So Chosen and Brave was birthed this year. Wow. I mean, I just have chills from head to toe. That's a lot really fast. Very fast. Outside of the fact that I teach, you know, we, we brought all of our, our home fellowships online. And so we have, um, we've doubled in size. We have people all over the world now. Oh, what a blessing. And we have started our global leg. So Kingdom House of Worship Global. And even when we started online, the Lord was like, even when we are released back out, do not stop this. And we wow. have had so many people who have been searching for places to go, of people to belong to, um, from Europe to Africa to, I mean, literally all across the country. We are watching the bride gather two times a week and we are having just a great time. Wow. How, what a remarkable time to be in. Yeah, it really, really is. This is like, really the time for us to soar. It's like, kind of overwhelming. Like you're launching, right? You're launching this beautiful movement in the midst of a pandemic. And I think, unfortunately, so many uh, of, of us in the body have, have unfortunately leaned into the fear, uh, right, that the media and, and the rest of the world has kind of gotten swept into. And yet this is the most glorious time for the, the people of God to rise in faith and soar. You know, we're watching things being birthed that really maybe would not have happened yeah. If, if we hadn't come home and really got into, you know, at the feet of Jesus, at the, at the face, you know, in, in the heart of God and really let the Holy Spirit lead, we might have missed because the busyness, right? Yeah. So, so many of us have prayed for this moment. Maybe, you know, we didn't pray for a virus, but we pray. I wish I wasn't so busy. I wish I had more time. Oh my, my gosh. Kids. I have more time with my kids. I wish I didn't have to, you know, I'm usually on a plane every other week. You know, I'm traveling consistently um, and I love to travel, but I am innately a, a hermit and an introvert. <laughs> I never have to leave my house. So I've been feeling bad because I'm like, Lord, I'm doing, I'm, I'm really good at home. So, you know, I, I want the virus. working. <laughs> right. I, want, I want the COVID to, you know, I want us to find a cure because we need it. Uh, at the same time, I'm good. <laughs> so I have wow. Been. I mean... <laughs> It's, it's exciting to me because I've connected with so many remarkable women like you and to see what God is doing, like from the outside looking in, because I've had so many conversations and you're right, it's global. There's things happening for the church at large that would have never happened. You know, people, because they, and you know, what's really amazing is because so many people are going online, just they have nothing else to do. <laughs> so they're going online. They're on social media more than they probably were before. And then they yeah. see these streaming services all over the place. They see these things because, you know, 
churches wanted to keep it going like you guys you wanted to keep your ministry going so you took it online because that's how we can do it and so people that would have never been exposed mm -hmm. are tuning in and yeah. discovering or hearing the call that god god's been calling them for so long they didn't know what it was and so how remarkable and the fact i think it's so funny that there have been so many ministries who have condemned people for watching online and now yet your ministry has to go online like, like you know what i mean just yep. even that, where we have you know shamed people like you, you need to be we have people. you need to and now hello the very thing that you you know berated people for you have had to become and they're seeing the value they're seeing you know that you probably have more people than you did walking in a hundred percent right because now um people have this a whole different mindset right we have really in error made people feel like god is only in the building yep right and the truth of the matter is is that you can only call the building church because the church goes in it but when the church is not in the building it's another building it's, it's another four walls board. it's a four it's four walls but that if god is in everything and everywhere then he can be just as powerful and and move and flow just like he's doing right now between the two of us right i spend most half of my time in in los angeles and half here in st louis because we have fellowships here but right now you're you're in california i'm here in st louis but the but here is the church right two people two parts of the bride two people in the body coming together and feeling the connection and the love and the power of god through this medium and so we can't ignore that technology is a gift when used yes. correctly right it's a That's gift right. and so shame on us or anyone i've never but shame on us for shaming people right for watching and tuning in before maybe they couldn't maybe maybe their jobs didn't allow them yeah to show up on a sunday but they faithfully kept watching faithfully kept connecting faithfully were tithing and yet we were making them feel less than that they were not as important because they weren't coming inside and god is like no 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 you are important because you could faithfully keep coming inside with me you keep stealing away with me you keep seeking my face reading my word loving have you know creating a love affair and a relationship with me and that's what god wants that's yes. what he desires I, I think i actually think it even goes further than shaming people because they were watching online before when we when they had the option to actually attend physically church i i believe that god is saying he wants to break down all the things that we said you don't look like this so you don't belong yes, right. you, you, you don't worship this way you don't live this way and, and that is that is i just rebuke that in the name of jesus because jesus said uh, he came for everybody everybody and who did he hang with he hung out with all the people that the people in the church said weren't worthy of anything and really? so i believe that god's call he, you know it's interesting to me because at the beginning of 2020, God told me that there is going to be a bit, a massive shift in the church. I had no idea all this stuff was happening, but he told me at the beginning of the year that there's going to be a massive shift in the church. And it's, you know, I, my, my personal thing, I have had a really hard time over the years putting the label of Christian on myself because under the label of Christianity, so many have been hurt and abused and, mm -hmm. and told they weren't good enough or lovable or whatever. And so I've always just said, you know, I'm not religious at all, but I am insanely in love with Jesus and I follow him and I do my best to live like him or to follow his call. Mm -hmm. And so I believe, you know, that, that God is trying to tear down that religious stuff that we as humans have put on people to make them run away from the church. Absolutely. Absolutely. You know, we, my husband and I have been awaiting this shift because we knew that it would come. Of course, we, you know, none of us ever know the way it's coming, but right. we knew it would come. And so to see it arrive and to already be in position, right? Because we've watched, you know, pastors not obey the laws of the land, even though the word tells us to do so. Um, you know, still bringing people into the building, you know, uh, recklessly, um, you know, trying to put their stake you know in the sand and not lean into what god is saying and what god is doing and here's the thing if mm -hmm. we can't preach jesus in our homes we've already missed it yep right if you're saying that the word is only alive from your pulpit pastor then you missed it right and so here was here's such an opportunity to show the power right because here's the thing we're the house yes that 
that the temple that the Holy Spirit lives in, the temple that the Holy Spirit lives in. But if we keep making people believe that we're not the house, then we are we're, we're missing God's original intent, right? We're yeah. missing the reason why Jesus came and died for us so that we could live with him, reign with him in eternity. And, and I think so often we quote John 6, 3, 16, but we miss the part that says, for God so loved the world. Yes. It doesn't say for God so loved the saints or the Christians. It says <laughs> the world, right? And so before we were us, we were the world. We were part, right? We were part of the world that we know right now is looking for answers. And so if we keep saying that the solution is a place instead of the personhood of the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost, we are doing a disservice to people who are right now thirsty and hungry for truth. And the truth is Jesus. He says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And people are looking for life right now. They're craving truth and they're looking for a place to, to belong to. And that place is in him. It's not in the building, it's in him. And the bride has such an extraordinary opportunity to show how beautiful we are together. Yes. Together. And so even with all that's happened in these last few weeks, you know, I have I have grieved the silence of the body. I have grieved the silence of my brothers and sisters of all races, of all yeah. colors, and have grieved um, the way that we are blaming, you know, instead of understanding that we are the answer. We, yes. We are the solution, but together, not apart, together. And so even in the last three days, I've just, I've, I've been writing posts to hopefully stir the body to see uh, that our unity and the need for our unity is the healing bomb. Yes. The world. Yes. Our unity, because we're still divided. Yeah. There's so many spaces and in so many ways, and we're still occupying, occupying our little corners of, of, of Christianity. I'm with you. When people ask me, I'm like, I, I say what, what, what the disciple says, I'm a follower of the way. The way is Jesus. <laughs> right? They yeah. didn't call themselves Christians. I, we are followers of the way, right? So I believe in the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. I am a follower of Jesus. I am a Jesus girl. I believe in the unfallible word of God, mm. and my life rests on the word, not my personal personal preference. So when people ask me, what's my opinion? I go, I don't have one. But I can take <laughs> what the word says, yeah. right? I don't have an opinion outside of that of God, you know? So I'm just excited that even what you all are doing with an expression of the body for women, because so long we have not seen our value in the kingdom. That's right. And God has always seen us as valuable. Yes. Right? Not, because he created man first doesn't mean we don't hold value. Oh, please. Right. All and you got to do is, is read <laughs> Proverbs 31 and God. you see the incredible amount of incredible. gifts that he poured into us as women. Mm -hmm. And there's so many things that exist today that it's very, very hard for my heart and mind to grasp, but there are still such limitations in the way that people believe when it comes to race, when it yeah. comes to preference, when it comes to, um, you know, being a, being a woman as a leader in the church. It's hard for me to believe that that stuff still exists and it does, but it will only be a race when we just rise up. And so, you know, God, when he was birthing this idea for Girl Power Alliance in me, he, he specifically told me there's way more women in the marketplace than there is in ministry. But in those millions of women, millions of them love me. And so their ministry is what they're doing. So empower them to go out and, you know, be the disciples and be proud of it and teach them how, teach them that they're not alone, which is really, you know, what we're doing here at GPA is finding women like you. I mean, you were a pastor and you, so it's kind of what you do, but I guarantee you, even if you were never a pastor and you were just coaching people, you'd be pastoring. Absolutely. Who you are. A form of pastoring, right? Yes. And I think that so often, um, in Christianity, we have felt limited in the marketplace. Yes, right? we have. Trying to find this, this healthy balance instead of understanding um, that the marketplace is a valuable asset to help the kingdom. Yes, it is. Right? And so if kingdom people aren't emerging or, or 
kingdom businesses are not emerging, then we do a disservice yes. in how we affect the world globally, right? That's because right. there are some people who will never walk into a church, but will be a part of your kingdom business, right? Or, mm -hmm. or you will serve them in your kingdom business. And so the kingdom principles and the way you talk and the way that you share information and give it will cause them to ask questions that will then lead them into a greater conversation of right. who are you and where did all of this come from? Because you don't move the way the rest of the world does. Your business is soaring and you're not using models, yep. right? And, and, and schemes and tactics that the word, world would use. Where are these strategies coming from? Oh, I'm so glad you asked. There's this amazing book. I don't know if you've ever read it. And you're probably thinking, right? It's a bit, yeah, it's the a greatest business, business right. manual, right? <laughs> for life, for, for industry, for community, for everything that businesses need. But first they need a biblical leader, right? Someone who has a foundation that's based and steeped in God. And so our businesses are rising, right? Our businesses are flourishing. We're able to recruit and, and employ other people and women of God because, right, we have created an environment that is so communal, communal but yet thrives yes and so it's a it's it's a it's a necessity so when god gave me chosen and brave and here's the truth i am not a women's minister so i'm not a, um uh and i love those who are because we need them but i don't travel most of the year speaking to women i travel most of the year teaching the body and leaders right and and that's all these men women children yeah. whatever and so um so when he gave me Chosen and Brave, I was like, well, this is very interesting because this is specific, right? But it's a specific type of woman. Um, and it is Christian women, but there's also a speci specificity into the type of women, but women who've been playing it small. Yep. Right? And so there's so many of us that have, I did it, right? And so I know her very well. I can speak right to her. And if not careful, I could be her again. Right. And so daily, I am always making sure that I remind myself of the value right in myself because God made a, an investment in me. And sometimes we, we miss that. And so one of the things that I've said to the women that I think that if we all could understand this kind of changes everything is that you were chosen to be you before you. you I'm sorry, let me say it this way. You were chosen to be before you were chosen to be you. Mm, that's powerful. So before you were all of these things that you look at and say are flawed and are a mistake and all, you were chosen to be, mm -hmm. right? And so your value is not in what you can do and what you have. It is just in who you are. Yes. And so many of us women have been labeled so heavily that we are always presenting what we do as who we are. And so yeah. we place value on the things instead of, on the person. And so I don't know how to just be, right? I don't know how to become because I'm always so busy doing for everybody else. Yep. But you were chosen to be even before you were chosen to be you. And so just the fact that God chose you just to be, if you never had any anything else going on, if you never had all the gifts and talents, you keep comparing yourself to everybody else which we don't, which is the, which is just a thief mm -hmm. for women. Lie from the pit of hell right there. Just your being is so valuable and needs to be seen in the world and in the kingdom, right? So I love what you guys are doing. And so for me, I realized that creating this business wasn't for me. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> I have been mentoring and coaching people for years, marriage counseling, me and my husband, we, I, I've been counseling for years. But once I started it, I said, oh, I see what you're doing, God. You, you, are, you are calling me to create a business for other women to then take on. Yes. So I was like, got it. This isn't for me. This isn't even about me. And so then I saw, and then I know how I fit in the overall, right? And so it was interesting because two of the women were like, so is this going to continue? And do you think you'll have coaches? And I was like, funny, you would say. <laughs> you know, there's women in my group who are like, I want to be a life coach. Oh, now, hmm, I'd like you to be a God coach. <laughs> yeah, right? Nothing wrong, with life coach. Nothing wrong with life coach. But what, but, but I want you to coach the life of a person, right? In a, with a God perspective, not just aspects of their life, the totality, yes. the life of, of, of a woman of God. 
and that you become that picture and that and that 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 warrior right that champions her forward so i'm excited uh, about just what god is doing right look at two businesses right in the in the midst of everyone th see, thinking that things are shutting down god is opening things up just that quick it, it's really it's it's, it's it has to be a God thing because I'll be honest, if I had not started the wheels in motion yeah. before everything got shut down, I don't know that I would have because I would have been like everybody else thinking, well, this is a terrible time to start a new business. <laughs> this is a but the, the wheels were already in motion. God knew. God knew. And uh, I, I'm in awe. I... I don't, I don't want to say I don't feel ownership in it. I know for sure it's not about me. I do feel ownership in it. But more than yeah. anything, I feel, I feel very responsible to be a good steward of this vision. That, that's yes. the, the heaviest that's what I thing. Own. Yes. 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 yes, 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 is the stewardship, right? Because if he placed it in you, then we are responsible for steward, stewarding it well. And so yes. that is my focus, right? Is, okay, how do I steward uh, the business? How do I steward these women? How do I steward myself as a leader, yes. right? How am I faithfully dedicating myself every day to be the best leader uh, to take them? And here's the thing. I'm not taking them on a journey. I'm taking them to a, a, a destination. Yes. There is a desired place. And I think for so long, a lot of uh, things that women of God have been you know, um, following or doing don't bring them to a destination. No. And so they're, they're consistently recycling, recycling, recycling. And, and there is a place called there for all of us, right? But then there is going to be another place called there, right? So we just keep climbing from glory to glory. There are places, faith to faith. But there is a place called there for all the women that are watching us and listening. You need to know that there's a place called there for you, that there is, right? So I, I know this. My life is a series of assignments. Your life is a series of assignments. And so this is the assignment I am fulfilling right now. And I think so often when we get boggled down into I'm only one thing or I'm yes. only called to one thing. No, you're going to live a life of, of, of assignments. God is going to give you a series of assignments. And when he gives you this assignment, steward it well. And when it's done and he takes you to the next, steward that one well. Because to, to whom much is given, much is required right? But do not despise the day of small beginnings. And I think so often women see the small beginning and we don't see that it is, it is, it, it is the shell, right? It is the clam, but that the pearl's inside. Yes. Right? All we can see is the shells like, this isn't good enough. This isn't, this isn't big enough. This isn't, it doesn't look like hers. And God's like, no, no, no. Don't despise the small beginning. Look at this shell because in a minute, I need you to open it up and mm. you're going to Mind, there's a pearl in there where you're thinking this is just a clammy little ugly shell right that doesn't sparkle and doesn't shine like this one over there you need to understand theirs was just a shell too but it is when you start digging and opening up what God has placed in your hand that you find that you have been given the most beautiful pearl and that pearl is not just for you but now God's going to give you the next link that by the time you're done, you have a beautiful necklace. Mm, what a and, beautiful picture. It is the pearls of all those that you are going to connect to. That's so really amazing. beautiful. I, I'm so impressed by just who you are, what you're doing, your boldness in the world. Uh, it matters so much. And, mm -hmm. you know, there's something really, I think, um, really special and important about starting small. Yeah, I think that there's something that people miss. You know, we're, we live in this world. Everything is so fast. Before our before we started recording, she sent me an email. She's in, you know, <laughs> Minneapolis, right? And St. Louis, St. Louis, yeah. Oh, sorry. I and in one second, it was to me. Like we live in this instant, instant everything. And so, you know, when you, you know, people get famous overnight and they create these apps and they're wealthy over. I mean, all these things that seemingly happen so quickly. I feel like you lose so much of what God is trying to teach you when you shove it off because it didn't happen fast enough or it didn't look the way you thought it was going to look. And there's something so special and beautiful about, and it's hard to do it when you're in the middle of it. I know. And especially when you're young, I feel like as I get older, I'm, I have a much different perspective on oh, yeah. time Absolutely. and things. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. But it, there's something so beautiful about, about really the whole 
you know, the sower and the seed and knowing that you have to prepare the soil first, then you go out and you plant the stinking seeds, then you harvest and water and wait and wait and wait, you know, keep the weeds out and it takes a long time. Then you, you get to enjoy the harvest Mm -hmm. and that whole philosophy. I feel like it, sadly, I feel like we're kind of losing it. Yeah. Nobody even grows their own food. If they grew, it was easy for people to understand back then because that's how they had to eat. Absolutely. They understood this whole concept of building into the kingdom, building into their future, building into their yeah. wealth. Yeah. And so I'm just, you're, a, you're remarkable. And I'm so excited that we got connected. I know what you're doing is going to be blessed in really, really remarkable ways. Oh, thank you so much. Well, I, I am blessed by... Um, just watching women of God arise in this hour. I Me think too. it is, I think it is a specific prophetic hour for women to rise. Yeah, I do. I think it is a prophetic moment in time. Um, I think that um, God is speaking so loudly to us. It's an awakening. Um, and if we can awaken to the wealth and value that we have, um, we will see so many more women launch the dreams that they've been just holding on to. You know, I think um, watching us rise in the marketplace, I think there's, I think there's so many untapped businesses Me too. that we've never seen before, never heard of before that um, just some, that, that a mom, right. Who doesn't think her worth as a mom could ever this dream, right? The single mom, the thing, you know, the, the single woman, the married woman, just, you know, I think we have so many CEOs, right. Who are sitting in other people's visions Yes. instead of really going, you know what, God, I'm, I, I'm going to make an investment in myself because you're investing in me and I can't fail with you. I yes. cannot fail. I'll make mistakes. There'll be some hiccups, but I can't fail with you, you know? And so, um, it's just, I really believe it's a very strong prophetic hour for women to really heed the call of God on their lives to, to launch, just to launch, to launch. Like, I, I just think that that is such a prophetic word. Um, you know, launching out of um, these prisons we've kind of put ourselves in and launching into the greatness that is, has just been like bubbling on the inside and ready to just burst out. I, I so agree. I, I'm, ex- I'm excited. You know, it is a, it's a prophetic moment for the world, but women, I'm telling you, it is prof- a prophetic time for us to launch, 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 launch out. I agree. Launch deep. I and, have been given the and, same word. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, um, I, in the beginning of this, and we definitely, I, you know, I've, I've told everyone, you know, it's been a re, re, reevaluate, remove, reset, reevaluate, remove, reset. And once your foundation has been set, then you've got, we've got to start launching. We've got to start moving. We've got to start soaring because as, as, as you know, I know so, so many people think this is about to be over, but there's going to be a second wave of this. I'm sorry. You know, so all of you running outside to the beach, get your little sun because we'll be back. <laughs> <laughs> and that's great. But you know, until we find a cure, we're still very susceptible, right? We're just, we don't have a cure yet. Um, but Jesus is the cure. And so the world really believes that we are, and, and, and by the world's term, we are, we have definitely hit a time of recession. Um, but this is not a, another great depression. It is no. not, no. and especially not for the people of God. And so where everyone else is, is recessing, it is our time to be just soaring and launching and moving. And, and I really believe that God is, is, re, is giving the body of Christ a, a resurgence, right? And, and really wanting us to be that light and salt in the earth. It's time for them to see the city on the hill, yes. right? That all the world's like, oh, wait, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. What's going we on over there? Been, we have been looking the wrong in the wrong direction. It looks really dark over here, but what is that light shining so brightly? And so you guys are, are, you guys are a lighthouse. <laughs> That's amazing. I, um, I, while wow, you said that somebody wrote me a thing right here, it's in my oh. desk. And it's, it's, that's what she said to me about being a lighthouse. She actually wrote me this whole thing about being a lighthouse. It's funny that you say that, but I, I agree with you with my whole heart. God has shared the same thing with me, that this is a very special time on, on the planet for women. And he shared with me this vision. And then, um, 
and then I want to get all your information so people know how to find you and connect with you. But he shared with me this vision, right? It started with just a few women and they, and they were like holding this torch. They had like, they weren't, there was shadows. They were just little silhouettes and they each had a light started with just a few. And when the women got together, their lights got brighter and they went home. And then that light that the women carried home lit up the people in their homes. And then the women would bring more women and it would light them up. And, and the vision he showed me was it started with these women. It went into the homes. From the homes, it went into other workplaces and other neighborhoods. And then before you knew it, the neighborhoods were lit up and then the cities were lit up and then the states and the continents. And he oh, showed yeah. me this vision. It starts with women. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. I think it's, it's, it's just a powerful time. So it is a powerful time. Well, I know that people are listening to you and they're going to want a bunch of things. And we're going to want to know where they can get your music. They're going to want to know how to connect with you, how they can get coaching by you. Where, where is all that? Okay. So, uh, music is everywhere, wherever music is sold. So Apple, TV, uh, Apple music, title, Google, Spotify, whatever, everything, Spotify, YouTube, you can go get the whole album for free on YouTube. Wow. Um, uh, what else? Coaching is um, www.chosenandbrave.com mm. and uh, the website is there. Also, uh, what else? I'm like, what else do I do? Uh, my regular <laughs> you do so many things. <laughs> my regular website is uh, www.kai a and middle initial a so k a i a panetta p i n e d a at uh, dot com and then you can reach me at social media with my name on Facebook and then on Instagram uh, I am Kai A Panetta. Awesome. And if you're listening to this podcast, all the information will be in the show notes. If Yay. you're watching this on YouTube, then all you have to do is look right below the video and all the information will be there so that you can connect with this amazing yeah. woman of God. Thank awesome. you for being here with me today. Oh, thank you for having me. I am I am uh, just uh, praying all of God's blessings over this uh, beautiful movement and that women will link arms with you all from across this world, that mm. it will be a, a national movement that starts um, a fire for the Lord. And so I'm really praying that for you guys in Jesus name. Amen. Thank you, my friend. You're so welcome. Welcome.